Hey everyone, thanks for coming to our session. In this session, we are talk about a Buddhist meditation on emptiness. This is the session one. So we'll have um, um, another session next week. So in this session, we will include below items. The first one is introduction to Larunga Buddhist Academy and Kempo Sudagi. Second, I will share Kempo's talk. The third one will go over the important point from Kempo's teaching. Next, Q&A will followed by um, analytical meditation. So Larunga Buddhist Academy was established in 1980. Um, it's in China, Sichuan province. It was funded by His Holiness Jimmy Ponzo Rinpoche. Since then, it starts to become one of the largest and most influential centers for the study of Tibetan Buddhism in the world. So as you can see in the picture, there's a lot of red camins in peak time, um, there's more than 10,000 people full-time um, study there. This is the study hall. Um, practitioners are study there in the daytime. Um, they are following different um, brand um, and um, study different textbook and um, meditation. So these are people walking around a temple at Larunga. So in this picture, this is the um, um, red cabin where practitioners live. Um, in a um, living condition, this is not very good. But um, um, when you look at the people's face, I was there a few years ago. Um, they are like um, so happy, like. A, and joy. So those joy are uh, coming from um, within, from their heart, from their mind. Kampo Suragi is one of the spiritual leaders in Nima lineage. As the Varaguru, as a Dzogchen lineage holder, Kampo is empowered to transmit Varayana teachings and practice. Um, Kampo translate a lot of uh, Tibetan um, Variana teachings from Tibetan to Chinese. And here we are a group of um, US um, practitioners who are translate a lot of teachings um, from Chinese to English. He emphasized a systematic approach of listening, contemplating, and meditation on the Dharma. And he has been teaching over 30 years. Um, if you are interested, you can find um, the translation of the teachings in camposodagi.org. Next, I would like to um, introduce some um, features of um, Tibetan Buddhism. Um, the first one is the gurus and the power of lineage transmission. Tibetan Buddhism um, lay much emphasis on lineage transmission that has been passed on till today from Buddha to our teachers. It carries a great power continuously and without interruption. Without receiving such transmission, one is not allowed to teach others, however wise and skilled he might be. This is um, um, very different from um, um, other sectors teaching. So the uniqueness of um, Tibetan Buddhism, four aspects of uniqueness. The first one is precept. All practitioners have to follow corresponding precepts. Precepts is the basic guideline for behavior. Um, precepts are the foundations for practice, just like earth. Without the earth, nothing can survive or grow. Without the precept, no practice is possible. The second one is listening to the Dharma. Listening the Dharma requires a wise guru. Guru, uh, also named Dharma teachers, are the most important from Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, we have another session to talking about 
um, the qualification of a guru and how to um, find um, qualified guru. So in this session, I'm not uh, cover those topic. Um, the third one is contemplating. The fourth one is meditation and practice. I will not cover the uh, contemplating and meditation topic here too. So this is the chart of all lineage transfer. All lineage is Nima lineage. So this is Kampo Jimin Ponzo. He's the founder of Buddhist Academy. And Kampo Sodagi and uh, Kampo um, Tsuchun Lodro is two um, very famous Kampos um, is under Kampo Jimin Ponzo's teaching. So you can find a uh, lot of videos for these two campos in YouTube as well. So from Buddha Sakamoni, the teachings is all the way um, down to our teachers. Um, Suri Simha is the um, master which introducing Dzogchen to Tibet from India. And then we'll pass along to Zhou sorry, Longchen Ranjan. Um, he's the very famous um, Zhou master. So he has um, a um, book, it's a preliminary practice instructions for finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind. We have, um, this set of meditations um, available on our YouTube. So continue today we're um, reading Jinmei Limba and um, Jinmei Gawa Nogu and to Pachu Rinpoche. So Pachu Rinpoche um, is the author of the word, my perfect teacher. This teaching, text teachings are uh, widely used as preliminary course um, for dependent Buddhism. And then the teaching passed to Mepo Rinpoche and Mepo Rinpoche passed to Jimin Ponzo Rinpoche and passed to um, Kempo Sodagi. This is all lineage transmission. All, most of um, textbooks is from the lineage masters. So that carries uh, great power. Um, when we study this book, basically what do you get is not the text, not to, because when we study the text, we think mm, this is very simple, right? But what do you get is for the experiential level, it's, it's all the way under this text. So that's the bless. And um, you will realize much, much more than um, you expect. I mean, you will get much, much more than you expect. Um, Kampo Sodergi said, no matter whether you believe Buddhism or not, it is important for you to know the nature of your mind. The myriad of suffering experienced by human beings are rooted in ignorance of this nature. And the two methods to realize the nature of mind um, analytical meditation and stabilizing meditation. So now I would like to um, play campus um, video. This is the campus talk on Temple University, um, because the video is pretty long. I will um, skip Campbell's talk. Campbell's talk is a Tibetan. So um, I will skip uh, some of uh, Campbell's talk and directly go to translation. Uh, Girgun Dantani, Loma, Namdam Yamdo, the Ne Chushu.
Kampo said it needs some analysis to determine the empty nature of all phenomena. It doesn't mean that now everything has to be disappearing, becoming void or empty. The relative truth is designated as a phenomena. As we see now, it's not going to go away, but it's the view determining the nature of whether the phenomena is as it appears. To determine the nature of a phenomenon is knowing it actually doesn't exist as the way it seems to. So I would uh, continue to share um, Campos teaching. Um, those um, teachings uh, will be under the description session of this video. Um, if you are interested, please complete the, watch the teaching. Um, whether you believe in Buddha Dharma or not, uh, because in fact, all of the suffering that countless beings are enduring um, on our planet in this world and elsewhere is all due to the lack of controlling one's mind, the lack of really identifying or mastering one's own mind. And so in this tradition, in order to get control of that, then there are two ways to approach, analytically or through contemplative um, placement in meditation. From the point of view of analytical um, understanding of mind's nature, then it is as the great Nagarjuna mentions in his Madhyamaka Karika, which is the root prajna of the middle way. Um, since it exists, it is unborn, and since it is non-existent, it is never born. And so this is reference to, of course, the mind, that it exists, um, and by virtue of its nature, it is unborn, 
and it is non existent, so it was never born. Now, given that this may seem contradictory, it allows a practitioner to begin to use reasoning uh, in order to establish an understanding of what this mind actually is. And so there are many ways to debate, which in involves using different modes of logic and reasoning in order to analyze and identify and reach a conclusion. For example, we may um, use techniques such as if desire arises in your mind, the passion of desire is surfacing, then you immediately seek to identify if that really exists or not. What is the nature? What's the intrinsic nature of that passion, desire, or anger, or whatever it may be? And we do have so many uh, thought formations, an abundance of proliferations of thoughts that are constantly emerging. Uh, so how is it that we can determine that the mind does not exist when this process is going on? So according to the different methods that we use, uh, which are based on analysis, then in mantra, there is a process known as Jumne Drosum, which means uh, to determine the, or to collapse the false cave of the mind by um, discovering that it, it originates from nowhere, it comes from nowhere, it stays nowhere, and it goes nowhere. Uh, but this has to be determined, so it means that one has to um, understand and try to see, well, just where does this mind come from? And where does it stay? Where does it endure? And where does it go? Where does it depart to? Now, there are many profound ways to explain this threefold process of analysis um, according to secret mantra's Upadesha system. But in order to receive those teachings, you would have to receive empowerment and you would have to have completed the 500,000 preliminary requirements. And so since that's not necessarily the case with all of you, I'm not free to explain on that level. But what I can explain is that this process involves, um, in terms of where does the mind come from? Where does the mind stay? Um, think within your own mind, just start to think about it. Where do you think the mind has come from? Did it? come within your body, within your brain? Uh, does it stay in your head? Does it stay in your heart? Uh, where is it located in your body? Where can you find it? And when it goes, when it's gone, does it vanish up into space? Does it dissolve back into your body? What do you think happens? Like right when you're having concepts, like right now when you're thinking. So where have they come from? Where do they endure? Where do they go to when one concept ends and before the next one arises? So in order to collapse this false cave of the mind, you go through this threefold process. And in fact, um, originally or primordially, the mind has never existed. And this is mentioned in many of the scriptures, particularly the Vajra Qatar, uh, goes into detail about this threefold process of the mind um, coming, staying, and going. And this refers to past, present, and future. Uh, the mind of the past cannot be held on to because it's already gone. It, it has come from somewhere, but yet it has vanished from that empty source. The mind of the present, uh, which would be right now, cannot be identified because instantaneously, moment by moment, it is so subtle and it is so swift that there's nothing that we can identify as, okay, there it is, because as soon as you try to identify, it becomes something else. And then the mind of the future hasn't been established yet. So how can we say where this has gone? And so in truth, it involves looking within, introspecting into your own mind to try to see, well, just what is this? And it actually becomes uh, extremely ineffable. In Campbell's um, teaching, Campbell mentioned 
why does the mind not exist? In his fundamental wisdom of midway, Nagarjuna analyzed the essence of mind. If the mind exists, there's no need for it to arise. If the mind does not exist, it can never arise. So that means does mind exist or not exist? Actually, it's beyond exist and not exist. In the reality, when we look at things, we always have dualistic mind. Everything we can say this is good and bad, yes or no, right? We don't have uh, yes and no, or not yes, not no, those options. So here, we are really look at the nature of mind basically is not exist and not not exist. Um, of course, this is uh, need a lot of um, study and um, meditation and you will find yourself. Can we find a mind? Where does the mind arise? If we check inside or outside of our body, we cannot find it. But when the conceptual thought arises, it does in your mind. But does it exist in your head or in your heart or in your mouth? When it disappeared, does it fly to the sky or disappear within the body? By examining where it coming from remains and goes, we'll realize that mind has no intrinsic existence. As the Diamond Sutra said, past thought are intangible, present thought are intangible, and future thought are intangible. So we'll have uh, um, analytical meditation who am I and what am I? But I will not cover it here. So I will not cover Q&A as well. Next, I will introduce um, our meetup teachings here. So we have um, every Sunday, 7 p.m. to study the word of my perfect teacher. This is the guide to the preliminary for the heart essence of the vast expanse from great perfection. The textbook is written by Pachu Rinpoche as we um, showed um, in um, transmission chart, interpreted by Kempo Suragi. The great perfection, another name is Dzogchen, is a profound Dharma direct resulting in enlightenment through direct mind pointing method. Um, this is every Sunday, 7 p.m. Um, you can register in Meetup. So I would like to also introduce our um, meditation session. This is Nongchi Nintik Nongjo meditation. Kampo Sudagi said, you know, current study of the preliminary of the great perfection, um, which is the word of my perfect teacher. Everyone's also required to, to participate in the actual practice of meditation. Um, this is what we um, meditate is based on launching past preliminary practice instruction of finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind. They are totally um, 94 sessions. That's all I wanna cover for today. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.